Welcome to the channel The Secrets of the Universe. My name is Rishabh and this is the seventh video in the series of quantum mechanics. So by the end of the 19th century, everything was running very smoothly. People had accepted that light is a wave, it's a disturbance in the medium and that Newton was wrong about the particle nature of light. Scientists like Maxwell, Fresnel, Fraunhofer, Young and Huygens who had vouched for the wave theory of light seemed to be winning. But like we saw in the last couple of videos, in the year 1900, physics took a U-turn. Nature threw new questions at us in the form of black body spectrum. It was the German physicist Max Planck who gave his explanation of the black body spectrum by reintroducing the particle aspects of light. Max Planck said that the electromagnetic energy is quantized and he also introduced his Planck's constant which he thought is useless. Yes, Max Planck thought that the Planck's constant which he gave is completely useless. It has no physical interpretations or no physical significance whatsoever. However, in the year 1905, Albert Einstein, who back then was just a third class patent clerk, reintroduced Planck's constant to explain a long-standing problem of physics, the photoelectric effect. Albert Einstein himself did not discover the photoelectric effect. It was discovered back in 1887 by Frank Hertz. Photoelectric effect is the emission of electrons from the surface of a metal when light shines on that surface. So we have a light source S. Light from this source is falling on a metal surface. And when this light knocks off the electrons from this metal surface, this whole process or the whole phenomena is known as the photoelectric effect. The setup of this experiment is very easy to understand. We have a source of light S. Light from this source falls on an emitter or a metal surface. Electrons are ejected from this emitter and they go to the collector and from that collector they travel through the external circuit and form an electric current which is also known as the photo current. Now suppose you start applying negative voltage to the collector. What will happen? The number of electrons that reach the collector will start decreasing. Why is that? Because now your collector has that negative potential. Electrons are also negatively charged. Like charges repel each other and hence the number of electrons that can reach the collector will start decreasing because collector is now repelling the electrons that are reaching it. Now suppose you keep on doing this, you keep on increasing the negative voltage at the collector. Add some potential or add some voltage, the number of electrons that are reaching the collector will fall to zero. Why? Because you have applied so much of negative potential that none of the electrons is able to reach the collector. None of them is able to overcome the voltage, the negative voltage that you have applied and reach the collector. At this point, the photo current will decrease to zero because no electrons are going to the collector and none of it, them are going out of the circuit. This potential at which the photo current drops to zero is known as the stopping potential. So as I said, photoelectric effect was discovered in, back in 1887. So by 1905, we had some facts and observations regarding this experiment. There were three observations. First is that the photoelectric effect is an instantaneous process. As soon as you shine light on the metal surface, an electron is knocked off within the period of nanosecond. So it's an instantaneous process. Second is that the cutoff frequency and wavelength. Photoelectric effect does not take place at all the wavelength or all the frequencies. There is a cutoff frequency associated with each metal surface. Let's say, let's denote this cutoff frequency by nu naught. Okay. Now, if the frequency of your source that you are using for the photoelectric effect, if its frequency is nu and it is less than the cutoff frequency, you won't see any photoelectric effect. No electrons will be ejected from the metal surface, no matter how bright or how intense source of light you are using. So if the frequency is less than the cutoff frequency, no photoelectric effect. You can also state this in terms of wavelength. Wavelength is inverse of frequency. So you can say that if the metal surface has a cutoff wavelength of lambda naught and the source that you are using has a wavelength lambda, and this wavelength is greater than, this time it's greater than lambda naught, 
then also you won't see any electrons coming off the metal surfaces. Remember, frequency and wavelength has inverse relationships. Hence, when the frequency is less than the cutoff frequency, no photoelectric effect. And when the wavelength is greater than the cutoff wavelength, then also you won't see any uh, photoelectric effect. Let me give you an example. Suppose you have chosen a metal surface that has a cutoff wavelength, lambda naught, around 620 nanometers. This roughly corresponds to the orange color in the electromagnetic spectrum. Now, and the source you are using S, this time, let's say you are using a red source, red colored light, which has a wavelength. Red has wavelength about 660 nanometers, let's say. Since the wavelength you are using is greater than the cutoff wa uh, wavelength or its frequency is less than the cutoff frequency, you won't see any photoelectric effect with the red colored light. Let's replace our source. Now you are using a blue source. Blue source means it has a wavelength of 440 nanometers, let's say. Okay. This time I'm using a source which has a wavelength less than the cutoff wavelength, I will see a photoelectric effect because its frequency is greater than the cutoff frequency for my metal surface. So photoelectric effect does not take place at all the wavelengths and all the frequencies. There is a cutoff frequency above which only the photoelectric effect can take place. The third observation is that kinetic energy of the emitted electron only depends on the wavelength. Now intuition tells us that if you are using a very intense or very bright source, then it will knock off the electrons with a greater velocity. That is the ejected electrons will have greater kinetic energy. But that's not the case. It only depends on the wavelength. So suppose you are using a very weak source, red colored source, let's say, that has a wavelength lambda. And on the other hand, you are using a very bright source of the same wavelength, same red color. Intuition tells us that the bright source can eject the electrons that have more kinetic energy because it's a bright source, it's more intense. But in reality, the kinetic energy of the emitted electron in both the cases will be same because kinetic energy only depends on the wavelength that you are using, not on the brightness or the intensity of the source that you are using. Now we have got three observations. Our next step is to see which theory of light better explains these observations of the photoelectric effect. Let's start with the one which was more established back then, this time the wave model. The photo emission process does not pose any challenge to us, it has no difficulty there. If light is made up of waves, it carries energy. Energy from these waves can be transferred to the electrons of the metal surface. The electrons in the metal surface can absorb that energy and once they have absorbed sufficient energy, they will be emitted as photoelectrons. The problem lies in the explanation of these three observed features of the photoelectric effect. The first is that it's an instantaneous process. Suppose you are using a very weak source of light and we are considering light is a wave. Suppose you are using a very weak source of light the amount of energy that will be transferred to the electrons per unit time will be very less. So it could take even minutes to accumulate the required energy and leave the surface of the metal. But experiments tell us that it's an instantaneous process. The entire process takes place in a single nanosecond. It's the time period is of the order of nanoseconds. It does not go to minutes or more than that. The second is the existence of a cutoff frequency or wavelength. The wave model could not explain why such a frequency or wavelength exists. Suppose I have a metallic surface and it has a cutoff wavelength of 620 nanometers. If I use a red source with a wavelength of 660 nanometers, experiments tell us that I don't see any photoelectric effect. No photoelectrons are ejected from the surface of the metal. But if I keep on illuminating the surface of the metal with my source for a long period of time. Then sooner or later, the electrons must accumulate the required energy and be ejected from it. But experiments tell us that no matter how long you illuminate the metallic surface or how strong your source is, if its frequency is less than the cutoff frequency or its wavelength is more than the cutoff wavelength, 
then the electrons will not be ejected. So the Wave model could not explain the observed facts about the photoelectric effect. By 1905, it had become a major challenge for the physicists. Finally, it was solved by Albert Einstein in 1905, who back then was working in a patent office. Einstein's escape was to consider light to be made up of particles. Now these particles were special. They were teeny tiny packets of energy, which he called a collection of discrete quanta. You could even count them 1, 2, 3 and so on. Today, these packets of energy are known as photons. Albert Einstein did not coin the term photons. This term was coined by an American chemist, Gilbert Lewis. Now let us see how Albert Einstein could easily explain the results of the photoelectric effect using the particle aspects of light. For that, first we consider the instantaneous process. So suppose I have a stationary ball over here. Okay, and there is a moving ball that is approaching this. And it is going to strike it. As soon as the moving ball hits the stationary ball, this one also starts moving. So the energy and momentum is immediately transferred. It does not take minutes to, uh, for this ball to start moving. It's an immediate transfer of energy and momentum. So Albert Einstein considered the photoelectric effect to be a collision of two particles, photons and the electrons. And hence he explained how it's an instantaneous process. The second is the cutoff frequency and wavelength. We'll explore this part mathematically too, but first let me explain this with a very interesting and simple daily life analogy. Suppose you want to go to watch a movie. The cost of the ticket is 200 bucks, okay? You go to your parents and ask for 200 bucks. If your parents give you 150 bucks, can you watch the movie? The answer is no. 170 bucks? Still no. Even if your parents give you 199 bucks, you cannot buy the ticket. But as soon as they give you 200 bucks, you immediately go and watch the movie. So this is exactly what happens in the photoelectric effect. That 200 bucks is the cutoff frequency. It's the potential, cutoff potential. If your frequency, that is the amount of money that your parents are giving you is less than 200, you cannot watch the movie. If it's greater than 200 or equal to 200, you can immediately go and watch the movie. Similarly, if the frequency of your source is less than the cutoff frequency, the photoelectric effect cannot take, play, take place. The electrons will not be ejected. If it is equal to or greater than the cutoff frequency, the photoelectric effect will take place. So this way we can understand the photoelectric effect intuitively. It's a very simple daily life example. Now the third is, Kinetic energy depends on the wavelength or the frequency of the source. Now, remember we said that if you are using a weak source of the same color and a strong source or a bright source of the same color, you will the kinetic energy of the electrons that are ejected will be the same. If you are using a very bright source, all you are doing is increasing the number of particles that are incident on the metal surface. But it does not make any difference because you are just using too many low energy photons, it does not uh, solve the purpose. Hence, kinetic energy only depends on the wavelength or the frequency of the light that you are using. Let's see how we can explore this mathematically. So, Einstein said that the energy E of the particles of light or the light quanta, the wave packets that we talked about is H nu. This is the Planck's radiation law. We discussed it in the last video. So he said that the source of light is sending photons and the energy of the photons depends on the frequency. E is equal to H nu. H is the Planck's constant. Now suppose this is the energy that is incident on the metal surface. The minimum energy that is required to knock off the electrons is suppose H nu naught. Nu naught is the cutoff frequency that we have discussed so far in this video. Okay. This is the this is also known as the work function of a metal. Now the kinetic energy of the electrons, that is the, the energy by which the electrons are knocked off from the metal surface will be the difference between the two. That is kinetic energy because the electron cannot take all of the energy that the source is providing it because some of it will be 
require to jump from the surface of the metal that's equal to uh, work function so the kinetic energy will be e minus phi so h nu minus h nu naught so kinetic energy comes out to be h into nu minus nu naught where nu frequency is the frequency of the source and nu naught is the cutoff frequency of the metal surface this is a function of metal surface this does not depend on the source only the nu frequency depends on the source if nu is is less than nu naught suppose this quantity is less than nu naught you see kinetic energy will become negative which is impossible kinetic energy cannot be negative it does not make any sense hence when the frequency of your source is less than the work function uh, the cutoff frequency of the metal surface photoelectric effect cannot take place but if nu is greater than nu naught the kinetic energy turns out to be a positive number and hence photoelectric effect takes place so from this relation you can see that the kinetic energy depends on the frequency or the wavelength of the light that you are using albert einstein received the 1921 nobel prize in physics for his explanation of the photoelectric effect in the next video we will be learning about another important quantum effect that can only be explained using the particle nature of light this effect has a lot of applications in quantum physics and even in astrophysics the compton effect so before you go make sure you like this video and subscribe to the channel and if you have any questions you can email me or you can type in the comment section below thank you